Yeah, this is Yambo, and uh, now it's the introduction about the NKN. Uh, in fact, uh, Bruce already introduction NKN yesterday, and I uh, have a lot of uh, detail explanation what it is doing. And uh, uh, today is the, the test demo, and uh, NKN is try to integration the blockchain incentive me mechanism in the network layer. And there are lots of uh, challenges and uh, lots of problems in there. But uh, good news is that we already figured out the solution to that. So that's uh, why we want to show the demo and uh, test it uh, today. And uh, that's, uh, I think, Bruce already introduced to that yesterday. We don't need to repeat it again. There are four core elements in there we want to figure out. One is how to distribute the uh, decentralization transmission network. And another is POR, we call it a useful proof of work, which is the hard, hardest problem in there. And the mill way, we try to intro introduce the incentive distribution to the network layer to do that. Before I demo, we want to announce that we already open source all the implementation. If some developer have interest in with that, you can visit our website to say how do we do this work and uh, what are already implementation. And also they can contribute the code to, to the project if they have interest in. The, uh, in fact, I want to show a live test letter for you guys. You can click the link to access the website and say what's the test letter already be implementation. But unfortunately, I can't do that uh, in, in, in the stage. So we want to play a video that uh, recorded by our team member, Alan, to show that what the test rate do and uh, how our implementation is a core component of the test rate. And the meanwhile, way, what's the potential usage of the test rate to interact with the user and to develop some decentralization application which uh, involved with the network transmission. Now let's uh, start the video. Release of our test test preview demo or version 0.0 Firefox, of our blockchain the, explorer for better visualization. Yeah, that's a three core function of the JavaScript of the test lights. Build on top of NKN. This is our blockchain explorer, showing the real-time status of our live testnet preview demo distributed globally. As you can see in the internet topology section, our testnet preview demo includes 15 nodes running globally. You can see the location and IP address of each node by hovering over the blue dots on the map. The orange line shows the trajectory of a packet when it is being relayed in NKN. Orange dots are connected clients. Usually a packet originates from a client, relayed by a few nodes, and finally delivered to another client. When a packet is being transmitted, a signature chain is generated as the proof of relay for all the relayer nodes along the route, as shown in the signature chain section. Relayer nodes may get token rewards from the client that sends the packet. The price is determined by senders and relayers, similar to how gas price is determined in Ethereum. The signature chain with lowest last signature will be selected to produce ledger node, similar to Bitcoin mining, but in a useful way. When a signature chain is selected, the ledger node is chosen from the relayer nodes in the signature chain using the modulus of the last signature. The ledger node will propose the next block and get mining rewards if successful. A complete list of signature chains and more details can be found in the signature chain tab. Here we can see more information including the transaction hash of each signature chain and which block it is packed into. Each node and client in NKN's network has an NKN address which is represented by a point in the virtual ring in the DHT mapping topology section. NKN network is an overlay network, so all the topology and routing is done in the virtual space. The orange line shows the path of the signature chain above in the virtual space. The block section shows the latest blocks produced in our testnet. Information here includes block height, when it's created, and how many transactions are packed in the block. A complete list of blocks and more details can be found in the blocks tab. Here we can see more information like who produced or mined each block and block size. A list of transactions contained in each block can be found in the Transactions tab. Here we can see two types of transactions, Signature Chain and Mining Rewards. Signature Chain transactions are generated when data is transmitted in NKN's network. 
mining rewards transactions are generated once per block to the node that successfully produced the block. There are more transaction types available, such as transfer, that you will see in the future when there are more activities in the testnet. At the top of the navigation bar, there is a use case section, which leads us to a simple messenger web app built upon the testnet. There are two clients on the page. Each is an NKN client connected to our testnet. When we type something in client A and click the send button, the message is actually sent to our testnet and being relayed by nodes in the testnet to client B. Client B will receive the message immediately and display it. Let's type something in client B to reply and it will send the message to client A through the testnet. Let's send a couple more messages all together and we will be able to see these signature chain packets into the block. Here are just uh, two clients. In fact, you can deploy much more clients uh, based on this network. On top of the messengers, there is an internet topology section showing the actual relay path of the packet when we send a message. Because clients are initialized with a random address every time we open the page, the relay path will be different if we refresh the page and send a message again. Now if we go back to the home page, we can actually see a block that contains the message we just sent. As we can see, the block contains a lot more transactions, which are the signature chains for the messages we just sent. Okay, thanks. And that's it. If you want to uh, know more about the test rate, you just uh, visit the website and uh, access the test rate link, and you can do that by yourself. And uh, thank you, everyone. Coin Super was officially unveiled on February 27, 2018. In only three months, Coin Super has attracted millions of customers and established a trading volume that puts it in the top 20 cryptocurrency exchanges in the world. And it's now the largest cryptocurrency exchange in Hong Kong, dealing extensively with fiat to crypto trading. The platform supports many different trading pairs tailored to local markets. Coin Super is fully licensed to operate in Hong Kong and will continue to seek relevant legal licenses to operate in overseas markets as it expands. It also owns the following advantages. Access to the vast resources of the Higgins Block Group. Full compliance with all anti-money laundering and county terrorist financing laws. World-class technical team and team of financial professionals from leading institutions. CEN, Coin Super Ecosystem Network, with its immense resources and expertise in traditional finance. Coin Super launched the network in order to bring digital asset trading to the mainstream. CEN will give our users and partners the chance to participate in building Coin Super while unlocking a multitude of benefits. CEN will go through three stages of development co-building, mutual benefits, and mutual trust. CoinSuper strives to create world-class cryptocurrency exchanges that will bring digital asset trading into the mainstream. CEN, embrace the future. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kenny Shi. I'm the executive director of CoinSuper. Uh, so just a little bit of background on CoinSuper. Uh, we are based in Hong Kong. We launched earlier this year, February 27th. Uh, so we're actually four months old to this day. Um, we've had an amazing growth story in, in, in this four months. Uh, we've reached over 1 million plus registered users, which is really massive growth. And I'd say we're, we're really quite in a, in a special position. Uh, what makes us different? There, there's a lot of different exchanges out there, right? So what makes us different? Uh, just to give you a little bit of background on our group. So uh, CoinSuper, our, our parent company, uh, just to give you background, like I said, they're, they're, they have three Hong Kong listed stock companies under the group, also one of the largest money lenders in China. And we're actually one of the largest Bitcoin miners in the, the world as well, a top five Bitcoin mining group. And so we're heavily resourced and capitalized. Uh, up to this point, we were pretty much self-funded. And so we're, we're pretty much set up to secede in a very big way. Uh, we, in the recent weeks, we just set up, uh, I say, uh, a Series A 
uh, equity round. And uh, Pantera Capital actually invested in us as well. And so it's quite, quite a huge deal. We're very excited to have Pantera be a, a strategic partner uh, with us. And so what, what other things makes us different? I'd say uh, we do fiat to crypto. Okay, so wh why is that important, fiat to crypto? Uh, if you understand the, the global landscape, you know, there's over 7.3 billion people in this world. Uh, you know, less than 2% of people have actually even come into the crypto space. So give, given that less than 2% of, of people have actually, actually come in, um, the way that people come into crypto will be through fiat because it's, it's just a lot easier to understand. So fiat to crypto is, is super, super important in terms of the growth of, of this whole industry. Um, if you also understand the global landscape, it's very cumbersome and difficult to actually um, have solid banking. And so I think one of the things we pride ourselves in our group is that um, we're pretty much fully compliant with everything to the point where the, we do have all our bank accounts and, and so forth very, very solidly open. And so I, I'd say our goal, our, our vision is to be essentially the Asia Coinbase. You know, where Coinbase has 20 million plus registered users, uh, I, I say in the Asia region, there isn't a, another Asia Coinbase. And so I think we're headed towards that trajectory. You know, we're, we're a very ambitious group and uh, we're set up to, to succeed. So CEN, the Coin Super Ecosystem Network token. So this, this is the token we're gonna be introducing. Um, so you know, th there's a lot of exchange tokens out there. Um, you, you're, I'm sure you're familiar with many of the ones existing like uh, BNB token, Huobi, uh, so many different exchange tokens. We're trying to do something much, much different. Um, so the, the, the purpose of our token will be to give people a chance to have a spe special access, especially to private and uh, pre-sale opportunities. Uh, this is pretty much all the buzz in, in, in the market right now is, is to be able to get, have an early chance to, to get in earlier on, on, on projects. And so certainly as, as a you know, keen and, and, and sharp investor, uh, we definitely understand this is quite an opportunity. Uh, to have this this kind of access, so the the more CEN tokens uh, one has, then we'll have they'll have a proportional uh, access to 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 much more more things within our ecosystem. Uh, some of the partners that that already have um, been included in in the CEN token, as you can see, uh, Cryptic Labs, Eight Decimal, Node Capital, and Higgs Capital. So very uh, very prominent groups. A couple of them which are are here at this convention. Um, I said, la most important message I I'd like to say is that the, the whole purpose of this Coin Super ecosystem network and, and our exchange, we really want to focus on solid offerings. Um, our group is really, we really pride ourselves in doing things in, in a much um, you know, higher fashion in terms of being, we really want to be a top tier exchange. Um, if, if you understand our group, we, we have uh, a, people with quite a bit of background in terms of investment banking, private banking, uh, we're highly, um, related with in, in the institutional um, segment. And so, yeah, we're, we're really set up to see. And we, um, if you have any questions, feel free to come find us. Uh, we have a booth here at, at this convention. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, so um, some of you guys uh, talk, uh, hear, heard my talk yesterday about like uh, how Center Network uh, works. And uh, uh, today I'm just going to basically give a very, very simple demo of like the look and feel uh, when you're actually using the center network, okay? So let's play the video, I guess. So that is, this is like a very short cut of the full video that we have, uh, we have on the uh, YouTube. So if you guys are interested, please check out our, our YouTube for like the full video, uh, okay? Could we play the video? All right. So. On, on the screen, you can see like two mobile phones. That is like a prototype of our COS. 
And what's happening now is that you know this Sailor network operating system, the first step when you use it is to connect to Sailor network. And connecting Sailor to Sailor network is the only slow operation you need to do. And you can see that you know I just want to wait, let everyone to wait it out and, and get the feeling of like how slow a on-chain transaction really is. So this uh, entire demo is recorded on the Rinkibai uh, testnet. So it is like all real, uh, directly connected to Ethernet, uh, Ethereum. And just uh, uh, two, uh, you know, uh, end users connecting to each other via a seller's off-chain service provider that we built, and it's still going on because it's like an on-chain operation basically. So imagine this is like how slow you would be uh, if like you're playing a chess game or you're playing some other games on the blockchain. That is like how slow it will fail feel for every move you take. Now the the demo will um, you know we will later see like the demo is going to demonstrate a off chain game where you have the logic of like a you know you're playing a, uh, you know Gomko Go with your friend while uh, you know kind of a sort of a betting uh, on each other the uh, uh, on each other's scale basically so like you can see that the Gomko game is played now and these all these transactions are secured and entirely off chain without hitting any on chain transactions that is how fast the off chain transaction is comparing to the on chain transaction we have experienced in the beginning of this video Right, so this off-chain transaction is really fast. You can see like people can really play real-time game uh, on Stellar Network's platform. Okay. <clears throat> so in, in this process, you can also see like I'm not sure if you can see that clearly or not. You have like a game stake and off-chain balance. So the first step, what you did is to deposit a, mount, a certain amount to this uh, you know uh, off-chain wallet, and then uh, you will have this uh, on-chain uh, off-chain uh, balance available uh, for you to use. And finally, uh, you know uh, one of the guy wins the game, and once he wins the game, the entire transaction balance will also be. In instantly updated without hitting any kind of on-chain transaction. So that is like basically the look and feel of using Stellar Network because you don't need to on continuously doing on-chain operations. You can just open a channel just like you use internet today. You just open a channel and start to use multiple applications or the same application for multiple times. So you can basically you know, uh, start the game again. And you know, starting the game again uh, in, in many like uh, you know uh, uh, proposals you see now. Um, you know, uh, for every state channel, there need to be like a new on-chain transaction. But for uh, for us, we enable the capability to do generalize the state channel. So there's no transaction needed at all uh, for this kind of a new on-chain processing capability. And one thing we also want to highlight here is that these two phones are not directly connected to each other via a single channel, but instead it is uh, uh, connected via multiple hubs in the middle via uh, providers of uh, Stellar Networks off-chain service providers. And in that way, we re realize the capability to do multi-hub generalized conditional state relays. And uh, we can basically just uh, you know, uh, play an another game again. Now let's say the second guy is trying to be malicious and drop offline. Okay, uh, will this entire like system collapse and be not secure? Well, that is the key point of Serum Network. Even though that every transaction is fast, uh, sorry, not not even though like uh, it, every transaction is fast, but at the same time it is uh, completely secure. So when you see that the, when the timeout starts to hit, um, the uh, the first guy can have the capability to start to uh, revert to the on-chain and claim that okay, look, the second guy is offline. Uh, I now trigger this kind of a challenging pe period for the second guy to respond. If the second guy doesn't respond, um, they will basically lose the. Uh, the stake at the game, and at the same time, uh, you know, even though like this particular game is settled on chain, there's no need to break down this entire connection to the Ethereum network. You can still use the Ethereum network's connection to continue continuously play more uh, game. And finally, when you want to like finish all your playing or finish all your interaction with the off-chain world, you can just click uh, the Leave Center Network button and uh, uh, disconnect from the Center Network. So it feels very much like the uh, look and the feel of using internet or a Wi-Fi network today. That is what we want to provide an ultimate, um, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 uh, awesome user experience for this entire off-chain ecosystem. 
So yeah, that concludes my demo today. Uh, if you guys are interested, there is like a full narrated version of the demo uh, in our, our YouTube channel. All right. Thank you very much. OK, uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric, and uh, I'm the CTO of MediShares. Uh, so my pitch will start from three stories, uh, and they are related to my friends uh, tokens has been uh, lost and uh, stolen. So uh, my, my, one of my friends come to me and uh, he says that he has forgot his wallet, his password, and he asked me whether he can get uh, his wallet back, and my answer is no. And uh, also another friend come to me and he has reinstalled so uh, iPhone and uh, he said he didn't back up his uh, private key previously and he lost his wallet and he asked me if he can get his wallet back and my answer is also no. And also another friend come to me and he said he just visited a scam website and he accidentally put his private keys to the website and then all his token has gone and it, he asked me if he's able to get his token back and my answer is still no. So all these stories come to one question, is that is blockchain secure than the existing banking system? If it is more secure, why for these stories, these users cannot get their token back, but in the existing banking system, perhaps these users can get some composition? So based on this, we have built our solutions and basically, it's based on the uh, traditional mutual insurance model, but we move it to the blockchain, and we build a, a blockchain insurance stack. Uh, and the core uh, system is that uh, all the users just put their tokens to a smart contract, and this smart contract will manage all the insurance uh, uh, con uh, contract pools. And when one of the users gets stolen, he will get the uh, tokens that are sharing by all the users who join this program through the contract. And this is a core system. We also build the claim system and cash system, uh, which if you are interested in, you can visit our website, uh, medishares.org, uh, to explore more through our website and, uh, and our white paper. And also we build a wallet called the Mass Wallet. We embedded this uh, uh, insurance contract in the, uh, in the wallet. And if you are interested, you can scan this QR code and you can download our wallet to have a test. And also our wallet currently already supports Ethereum tokens, ERC20, uh, EOS, and NEO. Okay, so these are three uh, situations that we build for crypto insurance. Uh, the first one is if you, your wallet gets stolen, you can get compensation. And the second thing is timeout. Uh, so because sometimes Ethereum network is slow and you want to uh, create a transaction, you want to transfer some tokens to uh, like uh, exchange and you want to sell it, perhaps because of the slow network, it takes one day or more to, to uh, get the transaction completed. And when it is completed, the price has already dropped to 50% uh, maybe. So uh, in our wallet, you can, when you do a transaction, you can join the timeout insurance contract. So if the transaction is uh, longer than one hour, you will get compensation through the uh, insurance uh, contract pools. And the last situation is price. So if your uh, portfolio value has dropped in a short period to a certain percentage, you can also get compensation. So these are three situations that we already built. Uh, there are three contracts that uh, are in the, in the wallet you can already use to, to kind of protect your cryptos. And also for the next, next step, we will uh, expand this model to other uh, areas, uh, including healthcare and the community mutual related insurance uh, uh, situation. 
So yeah, that's that's basically what we have already done, and also we have a booth down there. If you have uh, any uh, suggestions and interests, you can come to us, and uh, we can discuss more. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, my fellow blockchainers. I'm Jaden, the CEO of Hotchain in North America. It's a great honor for me to tell you what Hotchain is. Actually. Similar to the economic global globalization in the past decades, the entertainment is gradually becoming the part of our life. You know, such as the World Cup and the Hollywood movies played on different platforms all over the world. And Germany is a lot of the game in, in the morning, by the way. And actually, so even if, anyway, even if the entertainment industry performs generally well, there are a lot of issues need to be solved in the pan entertainment industry. So pan entertainment is everything related to entertainment. So you're gonna say it's a broad concept? Yes, but it's a huge market. So this issues includes like the widespread infringement on uh, copyrights, the lack of transparency in the pan uh, entertainment platforms, and a sluggish development in the uh, fan economy. So based on, uh, Sorry, excuse me. Okay, so based on those situations, the Hotchain Foundation came up with um, an integrated solutions. So Hotchain is, um, is a public chain serving for the global pan entertainment industry. So we want to provide blockchain developers and entrepreneurs with a fundamentally efficient and open operational system to construct a global entertainment and a sport and culture uh, ecosystem. So how chain deploy, uh, deploys the mixed consensus algorithm. Additionally, we create a chain structure like uh, that main chain is entangled with other functional subchains. So and it, um, this combination can, can not only solve the consensus um, uh, issues in a more fair way, but also achieve realize the high concurrency uh, TPS without paying the transaction fee. So uh, we also develop the side chains to link the data between application chain and the settlement chain, aiming to achieve the integration of the whole system. And the how chain system can be divided into the main chain layer, interface layer, and the app layers. So main chain layer consists of nine functional modules, and our development team is uh, def uh, is making the uh, making the rule of our public chain, and uh, while well, th they are also developing the wallet and the development uh, software development kit, we set up, we set up 193 public chain union nodes, among which 15 will be voted to be the member of the, our com committee responsible for producing blocks. So for the app layer, we have uh, we are developing five. Uh, pan entertainment products, including sports mining, um, and celebrity asset trading, and uh, and uh, blockchain education, and uh, time sharing. and a copyright storage. And those details can also be shown on our freestanding board next to our booth. Okay, so next. So why can we do that? Because we have a strong and sophisticated uh, technical team, and uh, they have a tremendous experience in developing like a peer-to-peer -peer network, cryptography, and open source database, and so forth. Actually, they are the backbones that moving hot chain forward. And in order to accelerate and galvanize the Development of pan entertainment industry. How chain, uh, how chain distributes operating nodes all over the world, and currently we covered eight countries. And we connect users by various social platform, and we we gather them, and we listen to them, and we uh, and procure their valuable suggestions, which enables us to make progress. And we post how chain weekly news in various aspects, including technology development and uh, uh, cutting edge information and uh, the marketing an analysis and so forth. We want our user to know what we are doing. 
So for Houchin itself, we have already received investment from 12 in, uh, investment institutions. And for our coins, Hot Coins has been listed on five top 20 exchanges already. So for in the near future, our roadmap is below. And our focal point are the uh, global notes distribution, development, uh, technology development, and uh, uh, investment, and uh, an upcoming $100 million worth of investment we're negotiating will be used in these three aspects. So we are committed to achieving the borderless uh, inter uh, pan entertainment industry, and we want to protect the copyrights from being abused. So if you are interested in hot chain, join our community. Uh, we have booths downstairs, and I'm looking forward to touching base with you guys. Thank you. I'm Hope Wang from the BTUN FinTech. We are a blockchain bank. Today, it's my honor here to share our products. In my presentation, there are four parts. Market, our company, our products, and our future. So let's go to part one, market analysis. I am a product manager in my company, so I always ask myself, what users really need? And what kind of financial market infrastructure does the trillion donor cryptocurrency market need? And we think that we have two main points. The first one is we think that the basic and the most important thing to a bank is to protect the user's assets. There were several stolen cases in the world, we know that. Think about the Bitfinex, Bitcoin, Bitchick, and the Bithum. There were several, many, many bad things happened. We think it's very important. And the second one is the wealth management. We think it's very important. And we think that cryptocurrency should be an interest-bearing plan. And we, our product, can help users to increase the value. So part two about our company. Higgs Block is a group, and BTUN is a blockchain bank. CoinSuper is our uh, exchange in Hong Kong, and Higgs Quant is our wealth management company. And Higgs Consulting can give the ICO program a professional total solution. And Hex Chain is our public chain. Hex Trading is our OTC trading. So let's go to part three, our product. As a bank, the basic we can provide our users is we can provide crypto custody service. And second, we can give our users a security solution. And third, we can give our users wealth management. And we also can provide users payment clearing solution and a super account. Cost of time, this time I will focus on the second and the third. So let's look at the wealth management. BTUN is a bank, so we can provide users with an every annual income more than 12 Person interest bearing plan. This is the basic. And we also can provide various financial products. For example, the real time funds and the hierarchical funds and the ETF funds and so on. So different products can make different users' requirements. The second is our code wallet for enterprise. And I will show you our product. This is a code wallet for enterprise. And in this solution, enterprise should finish a financial system in our website and our apps, and then use this hardware to finish the face and iris recognition here. And this device, have two main technologies. The first is the secure boot and the infuse. 
these two technologies can make this device much more secure. And this, sorry, and this one is the smart card can use this NFC technology to sign this device to make it make a transaction. It's very safe because this device, these two devices, have no USB and no internet interface. It can only use QR code to transfer the transaction files. So let's go to part four, our future. We have been working hard and uh, did do a lot since our team was built up. And we believe that and we also hope that we can make greater achievements in the future uh, because of the time. So if you want to know more about us, pl please contact me here. I'm Hope Wang and uh, waiting for you at booth 132. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Good morning. So my name is Marshall Webb, and today we're going to be talking about PATH. PATH is an ERC-20 token for distributed network monitoring on the blockchain. So first off, let me tell you a little bit about myself, and then we'll go into talking about the token. So I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, a little bit about my background. I started college at the age of 12. Uh, I was a hacker for an extended period of time. I worked with uh, Lull Security and a number of other famous organizations uh, in the security field. Uh, we compromised systems from Sony to Nintendo to uh, the PlayStation Network, Xbox Live. We did it all, and uh, we had quite a bit of fun. So uh, I did that until the age of 18, at which time I got caught. After that time, I opened up a network security firm uh, called BackConnect, Inc. Uh, this firm served as an ISP to some of the biggest uh, internet projects in the world. We serviced the uh, Free Software Foundation for every year and protected their networks on a daily basis. I've received awards from the United States Army, the Air Force, the Pentagon for compromising their networks and alerting them to vulnerabilities that exist on their public-facing infrastructure. After this time, I spent uh, a number of research in blockchain-related projects, and I came up with the concept of PATH uh, for, di for distributed network monitoring. Uh, and we've developed an ERC-20 token, uh, which takes care of this, so I'll be explaining to you how. So the way PATH works is, we essentially uh, incentivize our users to install our application on their phones, on their computers, and uh, their various electronic devices, commodity electronics that they have at home. Uh, what we do is we use these devices to run network tests network probes that verify the uh, internet connectivity of our clients' uh, business networks. If there's an issue, the application is reported to our centralized service, and at that time, we notify our clients that an issue exists. In return, our miners, our users, are rewarded with a ERC-20 token that we issue. Uh, the same token can be redeemed on our platform in exchange for more service. There's a lot of use cases that this kind of network visibility gives us. Uh, we can look into up, we can do uptime performance monitoring. We can measure latency. We can check internet routing uh, for different vulnerabilities and problems and inefficiencies. Uh, and this is something that uh, we've developed to solve real world problems. These are problems that we've seen other ISPs and CDNs and SDNs have on a daily basis, and we developed this token to address that. Our technology stack is very advanced. We utilize Kafka and another of other uh, leading internet technologies to basically uh, handle this uh, distributed network of uh, devices at scale. And uh, we perform uh, reporting and analytics on behalf of our enterprise customers. This is, uh, this is something that we've worked on for a long time. We entered this with an MVP in hand. Uh, we came in with the technology developed, and it's, uh, it's really given us an advantage uh, over many other projects that are uh, out there today as we have an uh, existing business model. So I just want to say a quick thanks. I want to thank our sponsors and the individuals that have contributed to the project. So uh, we, you know, we received uh, contributions from Bitmain and Blockchain, Crypto Capital, and others, and we thank them for their, their continued support of the project. Thank you.
Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Zhong Xingming from Block Cloud. So it's my honor to present to you Block Cloud, a, a blockchain-based advanced TCP IP. So our vision is that in the near future, almost uh, all the electronic devices may be connected to the internet. So we will be embracing a uh, network of trillions of connecting devices and uh, tens of uh, hundreds of billions US dollars market. However, the uh, reality is not so beautiful because uh, of uh, the network limitations. There are so many tragedies and accidents in, uh, nowadays uh, in China, Europe, and America because of uh, the network uh, communication failures. Uh, that's uh, the reason of this is that uh, the internet architecture was designed more than 40 years ago. At that time, from the left to the right, uh, the uh, network uh, 40 years ago was uh, uh, stable, has a very limited number of devices, and nothing is diverse. But now, everything is moving. There are so many trillions of devices, and uh, they're very dynamic. So. We do need to involve the internet to make it better fit for today's and the future applications. That's what we are doing. So we have been, uh, we are a group of uh, basically academic people who have been doing internet research for about 10 years. And basically we are studying how we can make the TCP IP layer better to better support the upper layer applications. So the basic assumptions of the internet has changed since uh, uh, the past 10 years that uh, we have so many devices and everything is moving and diverse. And the basic requirement of uh, people using the internet is uh, I care, uh, they care about the service and content rather than the IP address. That is, for example, if you use YouTube to see a movie, you really do not care where the movie is and who is providing the movie. You only care about what, what if the movie is what you want and if the movie is smooth and clear. So. We really need applications to directly talk to the service at once rather than the IP addresses that is not intuitive or indirect. So uh, what, why do we need blockchain? Because if we want up our applications to directly talk to services, we do need the network to guarantee that the service is trustable and the service provider can be benefited from providing the service. That's why we need blockchain. We use blockchain to provide trust and incentive for service-centric networking. Ah, uh -huh. there's something wrong with the network, so you see we do need to involve the network, okay? Uh, it stops working, so it just introduced about myself and, oh, okay. So, we have a four-layered structure uh, because the time is very limited. I do not want to go to the technical details. I just want to say that we have a loose coupled four-layered structure that each layer can evolve independently because we believe that blockchain technology is at the very early stage that nothing can be best for now. So IP is never the best. IP is always the best effort. So if you're the best, you stop moving forward. If you uh, can evolve, you can survive for the next 40 years. So each layer can uh, evolve independently. And we have a, a very well-designed uh, deck-based structure to uh, do the transaction recording, and uh, it uh, improved the IOTA Tango by three aspects. One is the confirmation speed, another is to defend the double spending attack, and third is to reduce the load complexity of the network from ON squared to ON. And this is the ecosystem of our 
uh, uh, block cloud. So uh, we use a deposit manner for uh, service providers to use our tokens. If you want to publish uh, services to the network, you do need to deposit tokens in the network. Then you can publish the service. Uh, we have a number of miners to challenge the services uh, constantly. So very much like the uh, proof of storage in IPFS, we have a proof of service uh, consensus if something uh, goes wrong, so the uh, tokens will be token to the miners, so the service providers cannot cheat in the network. And we're uh, not only academic, academic people, so we have been in the industry for about 10 years, so this uh, what we achieved for the past 10 years. And this is me. I was a PhD in Tsinghua and a visiting scholar to Princeton University. And I, now I'm a uh, assistant professor in Tsinghua. So my research field is uh, network technology and blockchain. And this is our team. So we have a very strong and stable team that uh, almost all the core members of our team are roommates and classmates. and a long period friends of each other, and we have been collaborating with each other full time for about six years. And we have a number of talented advisors. Uh, Fred Baker was one of the internet pioneers who attended the early design of the internet 40 years ago, and he was uh, a chair of the IETF, and we have two HPE fellows, and we have uh, four outstanding scientists of China, and we have uh, 15 uh, full-time professors uh, in computer science and networking. So this is our uh, roadmap. Uh, we are going to uh, uh, be listed on exchanges by uh, Q4 this year, and our testing, uh, main testing net will be uh, launched by Q2 next year. And this is our existing partners. And uh, I want to say that uh, connection makes people happy, and we are happy to make better connections. We are Block Cloud. Welcome to join us. Thank you. Hi there, it's very glad to be here to introduce my baby, uh, Safe Share Exchange. Yeah, it's another exchange. Uh, Besides uh, a brief in introduction to myself, my name is Yu Kong Hao. Uh, now is the COO of uh, Safe Share Exchange, a former uh, blockchain team leader of uh, Fortune 500. Um, after almost three years of MS investment on uh, cryptocurrency, uh, Actually, um, I'm wondering, I always think what is uh, a good uh, uh, cryptocurrency exchange looks like. Uh, after uh, summarize uh, uh, the opinion of our community uh, members, uh, we got uh, three elements of, uh, of, uh, of the answer. Uh, first is compliance. Uh, all of our investors want a stable uh, trading channel. And the second one is safety. Uh, we hope that the trading platform can, uh, uh, can keep secure from a hacker attack and, and inner theft. And the third one is uh, instruments, especially uh, for the uh, professional traders from traditional financial uh, markets want a variety hedging instruments for risk control and uh, uh, and uh, enhance uh, liquidity. So uh, our efforts also include uh, three uh, uh, three elements. First one is we obtained uh, uh, two operating licenses, include uh, uh, Estonian and BVI. Uh, actually, we have almost done uh, create a uh, uh, Euro trading channel, and uh, we are now trying another channel uh, for U.S. dollars. And third one, and the second one is uh, safety precautions. Uh, we have uh, not many news uh, for uh, security problems of exchanges, so uh, we do many efforts. First, uh, we attract uh, some uh, developers from uh, back 
back industries and uh, third party payment uh, companies. And the second, uh, we cooperate with third party uh, uh, safety uh, companies and uh, all of our platform functions have, uh, uh, have passed a uh, uh, series of uh, security tests. So uh, it's very calm. Uh, confidence to our uh, software, and uh, especially we provide a, a wallet uh, card, which we, our investors can uh, store their product key in the small card. Uh, it's very like our our common uh, credit card, and uh, when we make transactions, our uh, we can just uh, tap the card to our uh, mobile phone, and uh, the card can uh, communication uh, with uh, our uh, mobile app by the NFC. And the third, uh, third, uh, third part is uh, uh, we, we have prepared a variety of varieties, uh, cryptocurrency uh, derivatives. Uh, besides the spot trade, uh, margin trade, uh, uh, for the professional uh, traders, uh, uh, we, we, we provide features, uh, vanilla options for these guys that help these guys to uh, enhance li liquidity and uh, uh, transfer risk. Uh, in a nutshell, our uh, safe share exchange wanna provide a safe, professional, and uh, regulated uh, exchange for our investors. And here's our products and uh, services. Besides the uh, uh, core services, we also provide uh, industry news, uh, quant, uh, instruments, and uh, and so on. Uh, here's my uh, roadmap uh, to, uh, by, by August, uh, we will complete all of our uh, core services, uh, include uh, the uh, spot trade, uh, margin trade, and uh, the, uh, to the end of this year, we will, uh, we will um, provide more uh, in more industry, uh, more products uh, include a uh, uh, future index, uh, quantum platform bit, and the next year uh, we will uh, do more efforts on the uh, enrichment. Yeah, here's our URL, and uh, we have uh, prepared a variety of activities include a uh, 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 caddy airdrop. Welcome to Redis. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. So, my name is Ed Diller. I'm the co-founder and partner of Content Box, and we're going to be talking today a little bit about how to turn the blockchain infrastructure for the digital content industry on its proverbial head. So, why is a blockchain needed at all for the digital content industry? Well, for most content creators and those curating content, it tends to be a labor of love, meaning that creators such as podcasters, video producers, Musicians, authors, artists, etc., are often not paid for the efforts for, for what they're doing. They're contributing content without a, a lot of money for it. Consumers, on the other hand, are curating the ecosystem with sharing, voting, commenting, reporting spam, and also are not able to take any money really out of the system. So their investment is not rewarded. If we look at the current model now, when a content producer produces something, typically the intermediaries are taking most of that dollar, where distributors, payment systems, management, other intermediaries are taking too large a cut. So clearly there are some solutions here within the blockchain, but why would we need a new blockchain? And the answer to that is because the needs of the digital content industry are really unique to it. Within the digital content industry, what we find is there are a high frequency of transactions within the economy which uh, require the need for low fees. Producers, such as content providers, need to keep the payments that they are, are being paid private. Consumers require privacy. A, a lot of you don't want to share what you've been watching or, or reading. <laughs> I, I see you looking at me, and yes, I, you're right. Um, as well as... There's a high content volume of delivery, a lot of content is consumed, and the industry right now has few blockchain engineers who are going to be savvy enough to contribute to the economy. So, enter Content Box. Enter Content Box, which has three main components. First, box payout. Um, what this is is a fast and secure blockchain 
that enables multi-payment or multi-payment contingent, multi-contingent payments across the, the blockchain. Uh, what we do here is we are keeping the uh, a lean content, a lean layer that is going to be kept off-chain, the, the logic and content kept off-chain, to allow more of a high transaction throughput. Um, it's public with high privacy protections, minimal transaction fees. We have an identity and attribution service that will allow access across apps with privacy, security, and control. And also, uh, Box Unpack, which is a development center that will allow content creators to contribute to the blockchain with turnkey solutions in languages that they know, already know, such as Java, Go, Python, etc. cetera. Um, again, the, the three main components here are a shared content pool, a shared user pool, and a unified payout system. So once we decentralize this model, what it'll end up being is that content creators are going to take a much larger share of the particular pool. Uh, this does not look very good. Don't know what happened there. But the idea here is that Content Box is uniquely suited to meet this challenge because we are also the owners of CastBox, which is one of the largest growing and, and highest rated podcast apps in the space. Um, CastBox has 50 million episodes, 17 million users. Uh, we're ranked third right now in the Google Play Store with $30 million in funding. Um, and really, it's the perfect demo partner to, un to, uh, to unravel this uh, or to, um, to release this new content box blockchain. Um, we have a very strong engineering foundation. Uh, founded by ex-Facebookers, ex-Googlers, 108 top crypto investors across Korea, the US, Russia, China. Um, the cryptocurrency wallet with the largest user base is in CastBox already. You can see some examples here. And our plan moving forward, of course, is to continue to improve the CastBox integration. Uh, as you can see there, we've already acquired two platforms, Radio Box and CamCam, to extend our, our, our platform. We partnered with several additional media companies, again, to roll out Content Box. And right now, we're looking to expand the model with things like native mini crowdfunding Launchpad, as you see here, where content creators can get paid for the things that they are creating. Um, content marketplaces with fewer interme intermediaries, an advertising and, or a decentralized advertising option, and multi-platform on-demand video players. So together, I think we can build a new content economy. And thank you very much for your time. Hello. Cool. Thank you, everyone, for staying here this long. Hi, my name is Heidi, and I'm a CEO of Boosto. What is Boosto? We return power and freedom to makers and creators. So Content Box just talk about creators. This is another solution we're doing for the creators. So we, everybody use iPhone and Android phone, right? So this is a problem we're doing. It's a central, decentralized iOS store and Google Play. In our system, there are more than 350,000 social media influencers in our data pool covering 2 billion fans. And they already have a lot of engagement in doing businesses with brands and their fans through centralized applications such as YouTube, Instagram. But there are problems. The centralized applications control data, takes a cut, and th those people don't make money. And they definitely need better engagement with their followers. On the other side, there are 5 million applications in the iOS store and Google Play, which means to be on top 10, there's no way. Developers, after they develop with apps, they have to spend tons of money to drive traffic, to do the marketing, to market their apps out. And still, end of the day, the centralized app stores take 30 to 50% of the cut. So developers also don't make money. And we all know developers, they don't work very well with creators. However, creators as a people can bring them the traffic, bring them the revenue, but they cannot talk with each other one by one. This is our solution. Really simple. Boosto is a protocol. It's an influencer-driven decentralized app store. So it's a framework. We build a framework. We provide it to the developers. Developers can build dApps on top of our framework using our tools, libraries, and Oracle services. 
which means if they are going to build the DAP instead of building, writing like thousands of codes, now a few codes just bring their apps on the chain. And at the same time, on the other side, influencers can grab the DAPs they like, use them with their fans, and get paid, which means developers make a smart contract set who is taking how much of the revenue, then influencer get paid by that how much of revenue. There's no middleman. There's no iOS. There's no Google Play. Let's do a quick flow over here. For example, I'm the gaming influencer. I'm here. I choose these three dApps, a chat box, a game, and also an e-commerce store. So I can play games with my fans, and also I share all the in-game revenue with the developer directly. No middleman. When I talk with my fans, I also get paid. No middleman. And also, I can recommend all those gaming gadgets to my fans, and everybody have a better deal, and I, ca and I can also get profit sharing with the developers directly. No middleman. So those are just quick, simple demos, examples of how developers and influencers can do together. We provide the fr framework, and people can use their imaginations to do anything they want. Actually, those are already quite a few dApps are building on top of our protocol. For example, let's do a quick demo over here. So this is a messenger called Crypto Influencers. People can go here to scroll down all those different, oh, yeah, they're, okay, just try to see this is smooth. Okay, they can see all different crypto influencers you want to talk with. We have over 300 influencers over there, and you can talk with them, send them different tokens, and they will get paid. They can also send tokens to their fans. So this is one of the dApps in our ecosystem that will solve all the payments. And also other developers can use this dApp as an add-on to their applications. Why us? So we have over 350,000 social media influencers in our data pool cover 2 billion fans, which means those influencers cover all different verticals, from crypto influencers, from gaming influencers, from fashion influencers, from fitness guys, from travel people, from mommy bloggers, everybody. And we also have over 10,000 of the business users are using our existing system to search influencers they want to work with. So the next step is we're going to tell them, OK, guys. Now you can use our protocol to try to play with some dApps to make more money. And at the same time, we already have our Boosto coin in system. Now later we just say, hey, here's BST. This is our token you guys can also use. Plus, if they want, want to have their own digital currency, they can do that too in our system. Those are the current users of our existing system searching influencers every day. There's quite a few big brands and also big developers over here. So big opportunity. Our core team, everybody is in San Francisco here, we're local. And we have a combination experience of people from Microsoft, from Stanford, from uh, Anchor Free, from Chihu 360, and entrepreneur, uh, serial entrepreneurs. We are especially, we're very, very um, good in AI and blockchain. Plus, we have crypto influencers on board with us, and we are making things for those people, including uh, crypto influencers such as Crypto Bobby and also developer influencers as Steve Young. So who are developer influencers? Those are the people telling developers, hey, use these tools to make something cool. So those are the people on social media all the time to educate a lot of influencers, a lot of developers. Our investors, advisors, uh, definitely will have Shen Bo from Finbushi. We also have Paul from Twintera. We have so many investments right now. We do have a lot of investments from crypto influencers, by the way. So this is really cool. We're going to launch our framework end of the year. We're moving really fast. And this is my WeChat, if you guys have WeChat. So we consider ourselves as an influencer-driven decentralized app store. We'll take away iOS and Android sometime later. But now we're as a substitute for those guys. Thank you.